Welcome back on today's panel. We're talking about renting versus buying at a time when it's probably tougher than ever for first home buyers to get into the market. Joining me, Tim Fletcher from Fletcher's Real Estate, Robert LaRocca from the REIV and Greville Paps from WBP Property. Now, gentlemen, this is a... You're all just going to say, <laughs> don't rent, buy. No, not no? at all. Oh, no. Robert, good. Well, I would go. say that a, a third of the people in our community rent, a third are in the process of buying and a third own their property. So there's got to be a place for all and... You know, frankly, the REIV members you know, look after each category, so you know, we're not going to just say bye. And, qu and quite frankly, we need people to rent. Yes. Because we've got an enormous number of properties out there that An people investment. have bought. There's investment, yeah. so we need tenants. But if you can afford to buy, buy. And you look at, um, I suppose, if you look, you, look, you look at Melbourne now, Melbourne is a, it's a world city. It's, it's no different to, say, you know, London, New York, Paris or, or Rome. Um, it's getting, housing is becoming so expensive in the city that, you know, there has to be a place for renting. However, I think it's fair to say that your principal place of residence or your house, I think, and I don't say this as a real estate practitioner, is the best investment you can have because you get uh, the opportunity to have a wonderful life in it if you buy the right one, so you get lifestyle out of it. And guess what? You don't pay tax on it if you don't trade in it. Now, what other investment in this in this country can you find like that? Well, what are the so what are what are the strategies then for people who might? I mean, we always read the stories: the younger generation won't be able to ever own their own home. But there are strategies such as buying a small flat, staying with your parents a bit longer while you rent it out. All these sorts of things are these things that you're noticing, Greville, more and more. I guess parents are helping younger people get into yeah, the housing market. I, I, I think there's a, it's an education as well. I mean, what do you buy? Do you go and buy a, a three-bedroom house out in the outer suburbs, or do you buy a, a you know a one-bedroom flat in the inner city areas? And you know, I would always you know encourage my clients to do the, the latter, and that is to to buy a one-bedroom flat. You're going to get, do better over a, over a longer period of time than what you are to go out you know out into the and to the urban fringe. Do you think it's as desperate for, for people who are renting but want to buy? Do you think the situation is, is as bad as that? People who want to own their own home will never be able to afford to? It's often discussed, you know, you, we get this all the time that uh, nobody can buy anymore and I think the practical realities is that they can. Forever and a day first home buyers have had to buy on the fringe of the city. My parents did it in Faulkner in the early 70s and that was the outskirts of the city and you look now and people are doing it in Tarnead or Cranbourne or those sorts of things. So, you know, as a society we have to be able to create enough housing and keep it affordable enough for people to buy. But that also has an impact upon renting. Over the last five years, as a society, we failed to build enough homes. That meant rents went up twice as fast as they did in the first five years, but so did house prices. So it, unless we have enough housing, it affects everybody. And that is one philosophy, isn't it? Rent where you want to live, the lifestyle, and then invest in, in real estate where, where you can. But before. if you do, yes, you can do that, but, 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 and, and a number of people do. But you've got to remember they're going to pay tax, capital gains tax, on the investment properties. Now, sure, there are benefits, tax benefits, but, you know, I think owning your own home, um, most people aspire to do, to do it. And as I said before, there are significant benefits in doing so. But there's also that pride two people take in their own home. And there's some very good tenants about that look after mm. their properties as if they're their own. But there are a lot that don't. And those that own properties generally... It's not just a place where they sleep at night. They really enjoy it. They enjoy the garden. They enjoy uh, looking after it and, and seeing the fruits of their labour and the benefits that flow from that. So, there are, you know, there are upsides on both sides. taking a very holistic approach to it, Tim, aren't you? Well, I try to through it. I'm sure he's got property management as part of the business too, so, you know, <laughs> you have to. Gre Greville, uh, well, that's... Are you seeing a lot of... The people that come to you that want to buy, how many of them want to buy a home to live in or are looking more for an investment? Bit of a bit of a balance. We're, our market we're really targeting towards the investor market, and if you look at Melbourne um, vacancy rates in Melbourne right now, uh, they're still relatively low. I mean, I was looking at some statistics the other day, and they're you know, 2.2 to 2.4 percent, depending on whether you're out in the inner city or middle. Now, a balanced market is they say is about three percent. So uh, we still have a shortage. Of of, uh, of rental accommodation, which I think is you know, starting, will start to drive rents up. From a financial point of view, renting can make sense too, if you, as long as you have some sort of financial plan for 
for what you're doing. You're not just renting and putting anything. Yeah, aside. I, I think particularly at the moment where there's you know a bit of uncertainty in the market, and we're, we're, we're noticing that that people are more cautious. They're sort of waiting. They don't have to buy. Um, that they're not. Uh, I mean, in terms of getting qualified for a loan, um, it's becoming you know more more difficult. Um, finance figures are down. Construction starts are down. So. You know, people are sitting back and, 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 and waiting, and so quite often they are renting for, you know, the short term and, and to see what's going to happen. Um, but look, the flip side to all of that, and I accept all of that too, but a lot of people um, either are hot or they're cold. In other words, they're either into the market and there tends to be the, the flung, floodgates open up and, and everyone wants to buy, and that forces the market up. We had that happen a few years ago, and it become, uh, I think it became an unrealistic market. Now, at the moment because the market's the way it is. It's a tough market, but it's still, th things are still selling okay. This is the time, if people want to buy, to do it. Are rentals realistic at the moment? They're market rents. Yeah, I, I, I think that you know, there is pressure on, on and rents. Rents have risen because of the vacancy rates being so low, particularly in the inner city. And I think that with a, you know, when, when vacancy rates are less than 3%, you're always going to have that rental, um, rental pressure. Um, because of the, the, you know, the lack of supply. But that's the market? That's the market, yeah. And in the long term, we haven't seen the growth in Australia, and people keep suggesting it's going to happen, of that European-style lifetime renting. Our laws don't support um, long-term renting, uh, and I think we're still some way from being in that European place where people will only ever rent. Um, you know, it's ingrained into us from, the, think from our parents to say, you know, buy a home, buy a home, buy a home, don't Own waste... something. Own something, don't waste the money on rent. It goes nowhere and gets burnt. So I think it's still very strong in our society, the need to buy. Do you think the, the ups and downs and the vagaries of the stock market in recent times are helping people decide that they want something a bit solid that they can see? And I don't think it helps confidence a lot when the market fluctuates like it does. But the flip side to that is I think there are a lot of people who actually see bricks and mortar as being a secure investment. Uh, and uh, I think you I found over the years when the share markets uh, had some wild ups and downs that people have put their money into real estate uh, because they can touch it and feel it. Yeah, people have to live some somewhere. <laughs> you know, you, you, you can't sleep with a share script over your head. No. You know, so well, you can, but it's very uncomfortable. <laughs> very <laughs> when did you? What age were you when you bought your first house, girl? Uh, twenty-one. Yeah, twenty-one. Twenty-one. Can I ask what you paid? Um, I paid uh, ninety thousand for a one bedroom flat in Kensington Road, South Yarra. Right. Still and, and I wish I still had that because that would now be worth probably four fifty to five hundred thousand. Everyone wishes it. Robert, first house. Um, I think it was about twenty seven. It was two hundred and forty one thousand dollars in West Coburg. And uh, is this when you were the mayor of Moreland? Or uh, just uh, it was around about that same time. <laughs> about that same time. Yes, wow, right. things were really on the up for you. <laughs> they, that that was stage. all happening. Yeah. <laughs> Tim. This you don't have to tell us a decade. Well, <laughs> you work, price, it, out, you work it out for yourself, yeah. I can tell you. Um, but I bought my first block of land for $6,000. And guess what? I sold it for 9000 because I thought, you beauty, mate, <laughs> that's sort of much money. What a fool I was. Why didn't I keep it? Did you have a Beatles haircut back then? Uh, I had more hair than I've got now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we've all rented, presumably, and we've yeah. all bought. Uh, it's, I guess it's up to the individual, isn't it? So who can, uh, you know, the renting, it's, it's a very personal decision, isn't it? Yes, it is. One bit of advice I think is worth giving people here. This is, this is it. This is, this yeah. is, this is going to send them right? home. Yeah. No, yeah. go for it. Don't bite off more than you can chew. And that's what a lot of young people do. And when times get tough, they find they have to sell it or the bank sells it for them. Buy something preferably close to the city, as we said earlier, uh, that's modest and use that as leverage to get into something else. And go up the ladder gradually. And that's the best advice much. I can give. Gentlemen, thanks for sharing. Great. That's Great. it for this week on the panel.